Ben was a little boy that was scheduled for elective ear surgery. Unfortunately, when the surgeon went to inject what he thought uh, was lidocaine with dilute epinephrine, he ended up injecting uh, concentrated 1 to 1,000 epinephrine. When we started doing CPR and the child did not come right back, I began to feel, I don't want to say a sense of panic, but a sense of dread. I think everybody in that room felt like they were trying to swallow a basketball. You just, it was, it was really difficult to see a child just before your very eyes die. My daughter Josie died a year and a half ago at Johns Hopkins due to medical errors. Not only do I represent Josie, but I also represent all of the other children, the mothers, the fathers, the sisters, the brothers, the 98,000 people who die every year in this country from medical errors. I am here for them, for their families, and for any future potential victims. I would like to share my story with you. I do this with the hope that what I'm about to tell you will make a difference in how you care for your patients and how strongly committed you and your hospital are to patient safety. Josie was 18 months old. She had brown eyes and light brown hair. She loved to dance and had just learned to bounce on the trampoline with her older siblings, Jack, Relly, and Eva. She had just learned to say, I love you. In January of 2001, Josie was admitted to Johns Hopkins after suffering first and second degree burns from climbing into a hot bath. She healed well and within weeks was scheduled for release. Two days before she was to return home, she died of severe dehydration and misused narcotics. Her central line had been taken out. I began noticing that every time she saw a drink, she would scream for it, and I thought this was strange. I was told not to let her drink. While a nurse and I gave her a bath, she sucked furiously on a washcloth. As I put her to bed, I noticed that her eyes were rolling back in her head. Although I asked the nurse to call the doctor, she reassured me that oftentimes children did this and her vitals were fine. I told her Josie had never done this and perhaps another nurse could look at her. After yet another reassurance from another nurse that everything was fine, I was told that it was okay for me to sleep at home. I called to check in two times during the night and returned to the hospital at 5.30 in the morning. I took one look at Josie and demanded that a doctor come at once. She was not fine. Josie's medical team arrived and administered two shots of Narcan. I asked if she could have something to drink. The request was approved and Josie gulped down nearly a liter of juice. Verbal orders were issued for there to be no narcotics given. Meanwhile, Josie started perking up. She was more alert and had kept all the liquids down. I was still scared and asked her doctors to please stay close by. At one o'clock, the nurse walked over with a syringe of methadone. Alarmed, I told her there had been an order for no narcotics. She said the orders had been changed and administered the drug. Josie's heart stopped as I was rubbing her feet. Her eyes were fixed and I screamed for help. I stood helpless as a crowd of doctors and nurses came running into her room. I was ushered into a small room with a chaplain. The next time I saw Josie, she had been moved back up to the PQ. Doctors and nurses were standing around her bed. No one seemed to want to look at me. She was hooked up to many machines and her leg was black and blue. I looked into their faces and said to them, you did this to her, now you must fix her. I was told to pray. Two days later, Jack, Relly, and Eva were brought to the hospital to kiss their beloved Josie goodbye. Josie was taken off of life support. She died in our arms on a snowy night in what's considered to be one of the best hospitals in the world. Our lives were shattered and changed forever. Josie died from severe dehydration and misused narcotics. Careless human errors. Josie's death was not the fault of one doctor or one nurse or one misplaced decimal point. It was the result of a total breakdown in the system.
It was the result of a complete lack of communication between the different teams. It was the result of doctors and nurses not listening to a concerned parent. It was the result of a combination of many errors, all of which were avoidable. What if the nurse had called the doctor when Josie's eyes were rolling back in her head? What if she could have had a drink or had been hooked up to an IV? What if the residents had paid attention and seen that her weight had dropped over 15% in 24 hours? What if the nurse had not given her the methadone? What if someone had taken my concerns seriously? What if a patient safety program had been in place? I believe that if any one of these things had occurred, the outcome could have been different and Josie would be here today.